Okay. Let's look at lesson 8-1, recognize statistical questions. In this lesson, we'll be able to identify and write statistical questions. Let's look at solve and discuss it. Ms. Jackson wrote a question on the board. Then she collected student responses to the question and recorded them in a tally chart. What question could she have asked? Is there more than one possible response to the question? Explain. So this is a tally chart where you keep track of the scores and see how many points they have, right? Um, so this is a question on the board. She collected student uh, responses. So that's, a, that's how many students who, um, how many books they read, right? Is there more than one possible responses to the question? What could the question be, right? So if you look at the tally chart, you got books and then you got numbers. So what would the numbers mean? And what would the tallies mean here, okay? You have zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then they have one, two, three, zero, and then five ones, and then six twos. Yeah, yeah. What are some questions that you can think of? You, she could have asked. Ms. Jackson could have asked the, uh, well, the first question you can say is how many books did you read last month? Okay, what about another question? Could, could there be another question? Well, looking at the first question we have here, um, does this have more than one answer? Is there, is it a yes or no answer? Yeah, no, that, that, that could be different numbers, right? So this question has more than one possible answer, depending on who answers. And how do you know that? Well, the title of the chart is books. And the chart shows numbers from zero to five. And so, and that's, that's how you know. So what other questions could you ask that would result in a variety of numerical answers? What are some other questions that could have different answers with numbers? Well, what else? What it was your last topic's test score? could be one, right? All your test scores are gonna be different. So there could be multiple answers. Or what else can you say? How tall are you? Could be another numerical answer questions where you have more than one answers, right? So there are so many other questions that you can ask where you have different numbers um, as multiple responses. Let's focus on math practices. Suppose Ms. Jackson wants to know the amount of time her students spent outdoors the previous afternoon. What question might she ask each student to gather the data? How can she ask a question? How long have they played, right? You wanna know how long they played. So you can say, how many minutes or how many hours did you spend outdoors after school yesterday, okay, would be the question. All right, let's think about the essential question here. How are statistical questions different from other questions? 
So what are statistical questions and how are they different from just general questions, right? If you say, you know, there are English questions where they ask you to um, explain or math questions that ask you to explain, right? Um, but statistical questions, have answers um, that are numerical and they're varied. So you have multiple responses that are different in a numerical way. So let's look at example one, recognize a statistical question. Mr. Borden asked his students a question and recorded the data in a table. What question did Mr. Borden ask? Okay, so these are some options. What is the area of um, 8.5 by 11 sheet of notebook paper? So that's inches, right? How many sheets of paper did you use last week? Did, all, did Bill use notebook paper to write his book report? So which one did he ask when you look at the chart here? Sheets of paper used last week, number of sheets, five, number of students, one, 10, 1, 15, 2, 24, 25, 6, 30, um, 5 students, okay? So which questions do you think he asked? Well, what is the area of this? There is an answer. This is one answer, right? You're going to multiply 8.5 by 11, and then you should get an exact answer, 93.5. So this is not, this is not an answer for that question. How many sheets of paper did you use last week? Does that look right? Yeah, they could say, oh, I used five sheets of paper. I used 20 sheets of paper. So the, the yeah, the tally points are for counting the number of students. Yeah, so this one works. Um, did, you, did Bill use notebook paper to write his book report? This is a yes or no question. So the only statistical question that fits our data set here is number two. Whoops, I'm gonna highlight. Okay, so how many sheets of paper did you use last week would be the appropriate question. So this is called a statistical question. A statistical question always has variability in the responses. This is, it has a range of responses. So the question, the first question, um, the, the second question, how many sheets of paper did you use last week can have a range of answers. So it's a statistical question. But the first question and the third questions are not statistical question because you only have one answer. There's, there's one answer, okay? Um, and so he asked the second question. And then you can display this tally points into a chart here. This is called a bar graph. The bar graph shows that there is a range of possible answers to Mr. Borden's question. Okay, so Mr. Borden's question is a statistical question. Let's look at try it. Is the question, what was the high temperature on March 8th of last year? A statistical question. Yes or no, explain why or why not. Convince me, how could you change the question above to make it a statistical question? So first of all, if you looked at the convince me question, you probably know what the answer is. It is a no, why? Why though? No, it is not a statistical question because this question, what is wrong with this question? It only has one answer, right? This question has only one temperature as the correct. So it is not a statistical question, but we could change it to be a statistical question. How could we change that? Well, what are ways we could pull out um, different responses? Question would need to be changed so that it has a range of possible responses. So it doesn't have like one answer. So you can say, what were the daily high temperatures 
for each day in March last year. So that could be different days, right? Or what were what were the what were the, the daily average temperatures for each day in March last year? That could have multiple answers, right? Yeah, the answers are like you have one answer for each day, but still, um, you know, if we're just talking about March last year, there are different days we can answer and they're all correct. Okay. So first of all, let's explain that the question would need to be changed so that it has a range of possible responses. And then you can say, for example, we can say, um, what's another example that's, that would have to do with temperatures? When was the day when it reached higher than a certain degree? So when did it rain or when, when did it reach higher than 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So for example, which days um, which days had temperatures higher than 80 degrees Fahrenheit? Is that and then wait, that's not a correct spelling. How do you spell Fahrenheit? Oh, Fahrenheit. And we don't have the H Fahrenheit. Okay, and we can say, or what else? Or just like we discussed, you can also say, what were the daily high temperatures for each day in March last year? Okay. So these are statistical questions where they give you varied responses numerically. All right, let's look at the next page, example two. Use data to identify a statistical question with multiple answers. Lucia surveyed the students in her class and made a dot plot of the results. This is a dot plot. What question could Lucia have asked? So if you look at the dot plot, the title is students weekly exercise. And then you got some dots here, number of days, zero to seven. So weekly exercise, zero. And then there were students, three students who answered one, one day. There were two, four, five, five students who said two, two days. And then three, four, five, and then there was one student who said, oh, I exercised every day, so seven days. And then you can look at look at them, look at the dot plot and say, it shows a number of days, different students exercise each week. The statistical question she could have asked is, how many days do you exercise each week? So look at try. What is another statistical question Lucia might ask about the exercise the students in her class do each week? Can you come up with another question by yourself? Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So what's another statistical question she might ask about the exercise the students in a class do each week? Whatever you have, if it has multiple questions, multiple numerical questions, um, then that should be that should be a statistical question. 
So sample answer I have would be what type of exercise you like best? Um, yeah, and also like you don't always have to have numerical questions like answers. This is still a statistical question because you have different answers. Like even though you have basketball, soccer, you can pretty much label them as one and two if you like, but you don't have to. So as long as you have multiple answers like that, it is a statistical question. Or you can say, how many hours um, did you exercise last week so how many hours total that would be a different uh different hours so you would always have uh that would be a statistical question all right example three now that we learned how to identify statistical question we're going to use data to identify a statistical question with two answers Dante survived students to see, surveyed students to see how they feel about a proposal to choose a new school mascot. The frequency table shows the results. So that's a frequency table. What question did Dante likely ask? Is this a statistical question? Um, so if you look at Lincoln School Bulldogs, there's a yes and no. And then we got a tally. Uh, and then the score for yes is 22. And then the score for no is 18 responses. So what kind of question do you think he asked? Probably do you want a new mascot? Like yes or no, right? There are only two answers, yes or no. So because there's more than one possible answer, this is still a statistical question. So going back, to yes or no question here. So this is still yes or no question, but there is an answer. It's either yes or no, depending on Bill using notebook paper, right? It's, it's never gonna be no or yes, right? It's, it's never gonna be both because if people know it correctly, they will always say yes or no, right? So there is only one answer for that, right? But then for school mascot, it's not wrong to say yes, and it's not wrong to say no. It could be both yes and no. So as long as you have more than one correct answers, possible answers, then yes, this is a statistical question, okay? So let's look at try it. How could Dante change the statistical question so that there would be more than two possible answers? What if it's not a yes or no question? Can you change it? Instead of saying, oh, uh, should we change it or not? You can ask for opinions, right? He could ask, what school mascot would you like? our school to have next year. And then, or he could ask, which mascot, which school mascot do you prefer? Um, and then he can give options like, Bulldog, like they'll keep it, or shark, or a, a cat. Right? Yeah. There you go. So you could change your answers so that you can change the answers. You can change the questions so that you can change the answers that you get right, the responses that you have. So let's summarize our lesson. 8-1 was about recognizing statistical question. 
So in order to recognize and write statistical questions, you need to know whether the question has only one answer or several different answers, or is it varied, right? Statistical questions have a variety of different answer. Even though you have a yes or no question, it's sometimes statistical and sometimes not, depending on is it possible to have one or the other, right? So how many nickels are in a dollar only has one answer, one correct answer. So it's not a statistical question. Which form of US president appears on a nickel? You have a specific answer for that question. So it's not a statistical question. But if you're asking for an opinion, like how many nickels do students carry in their backpacks? And, or like, you know, uh, questions like that. Um, we'll have different answers, right? So that's a statistical question. All right, guys, that was lesson 8-1. Next, uh, in the next lesson, we'll learn how to summarize data using mean, median, mode, and range. So be prepared to learn mean, median, mode, and range next uh, video. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.